Horrible Harry Goes to Sea by Susie Klein. Chapter 4. The Missing Earring. November 24th was the day we set sail. We met at 7.30 a.m. in front of the school. It was dark enough for Harry to use his pocket flashlight. When he saw me, he shined it in my face. Sit with you on the bus, he said. Sure, I said. I was counting on it. Then I noticed what Harry was wearing, an orange life jacket. Where did you get that thing? I asked. Harry patted his life jacket and then secured the buckle. I got it at a tag sale with my own money. Cool, huh? Cool. And then we slapped each other five. Ida's mother, Mrs. Burl, was one of the six chaperones. Miss Mackle was happy she was coming along because Mrs. Burl was a nurse. Ida and her mother both had yellow raincoats on. Sydney's stepdad got on the bus with Sydney. Mr. Lafleur was wearing a pith helmet and a black jacket with silver letters on the back that said George Lafleur, Tombstones. Sydney had a pen and a pad of paper. He was drawing a pirate ship. Just before the bus took off, Miss Mackle passed out white sailor hats for everyone to wear. Each hat had our name printed on the front in black ink. I couldn't resist these, she exclaimed. I got them on special at the Army-Navy store. They'll make great name tags. Yahoo! We all yelled as we pulled them down over our heads. During the bus ride, Harry and I chatted. Have you ever gone to sea before? I asked. Nope. Me neither, I said. Mary stuck her head over the back of our bus seat. We're not really going to sea, she snapped. We're going on the river, the Connecticut River. The Connecticut River empties into Long Island Sound, and that goes right into the ocean, Harry snapped. It's all the same thing. We're going to sea. Mary rolled her eyes. Okay, Captain Spooger. I'm going to sea for a second time. Harry grinned. He liked being called Captain. What do you mean, second time? You've gone to sea, Mary? Once I took a ferry to the Statue of Liberty. That's where a lot of our ancestors sailed to. Miss Mackle beamed. I could tell she was glad the word ancestors had popped up in our conversation. There were lots of waves, Mary added. The boat really rocked back and forth like this. Everyone watched Mary jostle Song Lee and herself backward and forward. It was kind of scary, she added in a soft voice. Song Lee joined the conversation. I wondered why she was wearing just one gold hoop earring, but I didn't ask. When I was four, she said, I sailed on a ship from Korea to San Francisco. Whoa, Harry groaned. That's going to see big time. What was it like crossing the Pacific Ocean? I asked. Song Lee smiled. I felt safe sitting on Mother's lap. I smelled sea air and watched our ship make big waves. Once when we had dinner, my plate slid right off the table. Sydney interrupted. Hey, you guys, maybe we'll discover Captain Kidd's pirate treasure. They say it's buried somewhere along the shore of the Connecticut River. Suddenly, Sidney leaned over and tied his boots. When he sat back up, he was beaming like he had just found a treasure himself. You know, Sid, Harry replied, if you were a pirate captain, they'd call you Captain Squid. Just as Sidney held up a fist, Mary screamed, Song Lee's gold earring is missing! Miss Mackle immediately turned around. I'll tell the bus driver, she replied. If we don't find it, the bus company will. It's okay, Song Lee said. When Harry and I noticed her eyes filling up with tears, we knew she was sad about it. Hey, Song Lee, Sidney called. Now you can be a pirate going to sea with one earring. Mary made a face. Thanks, Sid. That really cheers her up.